today we'll be learning about the brachial plexus brachial plexus is a large plexus and is made up of complex structures in our peripheral nervous system brachial plexus is located superficially between two mobile structures the neck and the arm and that's why it's susceptible to be injured during traction type of injuries let's look at this brachial plexus on this given model and what are you looking at you're looking these are my cervical vertebrae sternum my rib cage clavicle and the proximal part of my humerus bone which is contributing in making glenohumeral joint so now these are my different nerves so who is contributing in making my brachial plexus i have the ventral rami of c5 c6 c7 c8 and at the bottom is the t1 so these spinal nerves their ventral rami they contribute in making this brachial plexus and if you look at it anatomically this is my para vertebral region and these are the nerve roots now look at the close association of my brachial plexus with the neighboring vessels and you can see here the common carotid you can see here the subclavian later it becomes the axillary artery we will look at the formation of brachial plexus with the help of this schematic presentation as we have said already the brachial plexus is contributed by c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 spinal nerves so these nerves so this is you are looking at the nerve roots and we said where are they located they are located in the paravertebral region now what are we taking we are taking only the ventral rami which are coming from these nerve roots now these ventral rami what happens the ventral rami of my c5 and c6 and and the bottom c8 and t1 they join together but the ventral ramus of my c7 is left alone and now what are they doing they are contributing in making trunks and where are these trunks located these are located in between my sclenia muscles and we all know we have anterior sclenius medial sclenius and posterior sclenia muscle so my these trunks are located in between these sclenia muscle and according to their location we divide them we name them as the superior middle and the inferior trunks after this now my these trunks they divide they divide into anterior and posterior the yellow color is indicating the anterior divisions and the orange is indicating the posterior divisions and then as we said yellow is anterior and orange is a posterior division now see what happens let's take first the anterior divisions so the anterior division which is coming from superior and middle they join and then the anterior division which is coming from my inferior trunk it is left alone and now all the posterior divisions they merge to become one and the anterior division from my superior and middle they go as one piece and that is shown with green and the anterior division of my inferior trunk it continues as this blue let's label them so we need to have a criteria so we call them lateral which is the continuation of what after the union of my anterior division of my superior and middle trunks they join to make the anterior division of this my superior and middle trunks they join to make the lateral cord and why i'm saying lateral because it is placed laterally lateral to my axillary artery now one who's placed medial to my axillary artery we call it medial cord and the one who's placing posterior to my axillary artery we call it as the posterior cord and where are they located they all are located in the axilla now let's see what happens 
Now these lateral cord, medial cord and posterior cord, they becomes nerves where in the brachial region. Brachial region, my arm region. So now my lateral cord continues as the musculocutaneous nerve. It gives branches but we are not talking at the moment. My medial cord continues as the ulnar nerve. My lateral cord and medial cord, they merge. They give true contribution and they merge together and they are called the lateral root and the medial root and they are giving another branch and this is named as the median nerve. So from my lateral cord and medial cord, we have musculocutaneous, lateral cord continues as musculocutaneous nerve. Medial cord continues as ulnar nerve and their two contribution, the lateral root and medial root, they join to give us a median nerve. And then what happens? The posterior cord gives other branches but one of the very important branch is the axillary nerve and then it continues as the radial nerve. Now let's look at the other branches which are given by the different parts of my brachial plexus in different anatomical locations. So now let's look at this. From the roots C5 we have a branch and that is called dorsal scapular nerve and later there are three roots there are three rootlets they join to form one nerve from C5 from C6 and C7 and that is my long thoracic nerve and this nerve controls my serratus anterior muscle. After that from the trunks the superior trunk there is a branch and that is known as suprascapular nerve but we don't see any other branch coming from middle or the inferior trunks. I'm mentioning about main and major and clinically relevant branches. After that divisions does not give any branch. Now we'll have branches coming from where? From the cords and where? In the axilla. And now let's look at it. The lateral cord and medial cord they give two branches respectively and the one which comes from the lateral cord we call it that is named as lateral pectoral nerve and the one which is coming from medial cord that is known as the medial pectoral nerve. After giving these two my medial cord further gives two more branches and these are cutaneous branches, sensory branches and one is medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the other one is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So now what we are left with? We are left with the posterior cord and see what happens. Posterior cord gives a branch and that is with the name of upper subscapular nerve. After that it gives thoracodorsal nerve and the last that is my lower subscapular nerve. So this is how we have talked about the schematic formation of my brachial plexus. Now let's review, let's look at this brachial plexus on a cadaver and let's look at in reality how these nerves look like and let's apply this knowledge which we have learned so far. Okay, now let me give you an orientation on this cadaver. This is the right axillary region and you are looking at right brachial plexus. And at the moment we are at the roots and there you can see I'll try to show it to you. Look at this big structure is my subclavian artery. And after that, you can see this whole thing from here till here is my brachial plexus. And this is where the clavicle was which has been cut. So above to this black bar is the supraclavicular part of my plexus and below to it is my infraclavicular part of the plexus. So let me, let's try to show it to you each branch one by one. So now this is my C5. You can see the C6, C7, C8 and this one is my T1. 
and you can see that C8 and T1 they join to form inferior trunk and C7 continues and C5 and C6 they join to form superior trunk you can see very easily the middle trunk and you can see very easily the inferior trunk and then we have the divisions which I'm not showing you at the moment after the divisions what we have learned the entire division of my superior and middle they join to form the upper the lateral cord and there we are looking at the lateral cord I hope everybody can see that why I'm calling it lateral because this is my axillary artery so this is my lateral cord and you can see something behind that that is nothing but my this is medial to it so I call it medial cord and if you go behind if I retract it here and I retract this one here so this one is nothing but my posterior cord I hope it's clear I'm stretching at the lateral cord this one is the medial cord and this one is the posterior cord and who's the structure on the basis of whom we are naming them that is my axillary artery I hope it is clear to you all now can you see that when we have to identify something very important an M can you see one limb a dip and up and down so there is an M form and you have to identify always that where is the M this we said very clearly that this was my lateral cord and lateral cord continues as the musculocutaneous nerve then it gives a lateral root to my median nerve and then from my medial cord this is my medial cord and from that medial cord we are getting a medial root to my median nerve and this my medial cord himself continues as the ulnar nerve and where is the posterior cord you can see behind the one which is looking if I retract this one the one which is behind my axillary artery that is my posterior cord so now from this M we, it's very obvious this is lateral cord it continues as musculocutaneous then it, uh, it gives a root and then we get a root and they are making what my median nerve and then most medially we have the ulnar nerve now look at it this lateral cord which becomes musculocutaneous it is going towards this muscle which is located here next to my biceps this is my coraco brachialis muscle and you can see this musculocutaneous nerve is going and it is piercing this muscle it pierces my coraco brachialis it supplies it here then it goes to supply my biceps and brachialis which we'll be learning in further videos now you're looking at the posterior cord and look at it posterior cord gives one of the very important branch and that is the axillary and this axillary is going backwards close to my proximal humerus and after giving this axillary my posterior cord continues as the radial nerve 